evening ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to Shakespeare in the Park's 17th year of park performances. It's hard to believe, but 2001 was when it all started right here in the Otapuni Gardens. It's great to have your company tonight. I must warn you that you're about to enter the very dangerous and chaotic world of Games and Thrones. A world where life is cheap and power is dearly bought. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. There is no middle ground. But fear not, good people of Invercargill. I'm here to keep you safe and to guide you on your journey. Please feel free to take photos as we go along to share on social media later. At the end of our promenade, we'll find ourselves at the Masonic Lodge where a nice hot cup of tea or coffee awaits us. There'll also be the opportunity to take more photos there and for some counseling or debriefing for those who feel it necessary. The lodge is also the only point on our journey where there are toilets, so I hope you can hold on for the next hour or so. I see we've got a few children in our party. Hello, welcome. Um, please be advised that those of a sensitive disposition may find some scenes a little disturbing. Shakespeare, however, was unconcerned with classification ratings 400 years ago, and neither are we tonight. So I suggest you simply close your eyes if there's anything not to your taste. You'll see as we enter each realm, there are two markers. Please, for your own safety and for the optimum viewing experience, position yourselves between those markers and huddle in tight. This is quite a big group for our show. All right, there's a lot to see, so let's begin our journey. Please, follow me. Frenchmen fly. Now help! Ye charming spells and periods, and ye choice spirits that admonish me, and bring me signs of future accidents. You speedy helpers, that are substitutes unto the lordly monarch of the north. Help me, this once, that France may get the field. This speedy and quick appearance argues proof of your accustomed diligence to me. Now, ye familiar spirits that are called out of the powerful regions under earth, help me this once, that France may get the field. Hold me not with silence over long, where I was wont to feed you with my blood. I lop a member off and give it to you in earnest of further benefit. So you do condescend to help me now. No up to every dress. My body shall pay recompense, if you will grant my suit. Cannot my body nor blood sacrifice and treat you to your wanted furtherance? Then take my soul, my body, soul and all, before that England gives the French the foil. See, they forsake me. Now, the time is come that France must veil her lofty plume at crest and let her head fall into England's lap. My ancient incantations are too weak and they too strong for me to buckle with. Now, France, thy glory droopeth to the dust. Think'st thou, thou an Egyptian puppet shalt be shown in Rome as well as I. Mechanic slaves with greasy aprons, rules and hammers shall uplift us to the view. In their thick breath, rank of gross diet shall be unclouded and forced to drink their vapor. And the gods forbid! Nay, tis most certain, Iris. Saucy lictors will catch at us like strumpets, and scald rhymers ballad us out of tune. The quick comedians extemporally will stage us and present our Alexandrian revels. Antony shall be brought drunk and forth, and I shall see some squeaking Cleopatra boy my greatness, if the posture of a whore. Oh, the good gods. Nay, to certain. I'll never see to it, for I'm sure my nails are stronger than mine eyes. Why, 
that's the way to fool their preparation and to conquer their most absurd intents. Show me my woman like a queen. Go fetch my best attires. Charmian. I am again for sideness to meet Mark Antony. Now, noble Charmian, we'll dispatch indeed. And when thou hast done this chair, I'll give thee leave to play till doomsday. Who is this boy? Here is a rural fellow that will not be denied your highness's presence. He brings you figs. Let him come in. What poor an instrument may do a noble deed. He brings me liberty. My resolution's placed and I have nothing of woman in me. Now from head to foot, I am marble constant. Now the fleeting moon, no planet is of mine. <coughs> Hast thou the pretty worm of Nihilus there that kills and pains not? Truly, I have him. <laughs> but I shall not be the party that should desire you to touch him. For his biting is immortal. <laughs> Those that do die of it do seldom or never recover. Mm, mm, mm. Rememberest thou any that have died on it? Oh, very many. Men and women too. I heard of one of them not longer than yesterday. A very honest woman, but something given to lie. Oh, as a woman should not be. But in the way of honesty, how she died at the biting of it. <laughs> the pain she felt truly. Oh, she makes a very good report of the worm. Farewell. I wish you all the joy of the worm. Get thee gone. Farewell. You must not think this, Suck you, for the worm will do his kind. I, I, farewell. Look you, the worm is not to be trusted, but in the keeping of wise people, for indeed uh, there is no goodness in worm. Take thou no care, it shall be heeded. Very good. Give it nothing, I pray you, for it is not worth the feeding. <laughs> Will it eat me? You must not think I am so simple, for I know the devil himself will not eat a woman. <laughs> Get thee hence, farewell. Yes, forsooth, I wish you joy of the worm. Bring me my robe. Put on my crown. I have immortal longings in me. Now no more the juice of Egypt's grape shall moist this lip. Yeah, yeah, good Iris, quick. Methinks I hear Antony call. I see him rouse himself to praise my noble act. I hear him mock the luck of Caesar, which the gods give men to excuse their afterwrath. Husband, I come. Out in my name, my courage prove my title. I am fire and air. My other elements I give to base a life. So, have you done? Come then and take the last warmth of my lips. Farewell, kind Charmian. <coughs> Iris, long farewell. <coughs> Have I the aspic in my lips? Dost fall. If thou and nature can so gently part the stroke of a love as, as a lover's wench, which hurts and is desired. Dost thou lie still? If thus thou vanishest, Thou tellest the world it is not worth leave taking. Dissolve, let cloud and rain, the gods themselves do wait. This proves me base. If she first meet the curled Antony, he'll make demand of her and spend that kiss, which is my heaven to have. Come thou mortal rich. With thy sharp teeth, 
this not intrinsicate of life at once untie. Poor venomous fool, be angry and dispatch. How couldst thou speak that I might hear thee call great Caesar as oh, Eastern Star? Peace, peace. Dost thou not see the baby at my breast that sucks the nurse sleep? Oh, break, break. As sweet as balm, as soft as air. Oh, Antony! Nay, I will take thee too. Should I stay? Boast thee deaf, and thy position lies. Alas, I'm paralleled. <laughs> Windows closed, and golden fevers never be beheld of eyes again so royal. Come apace, and dispatch. I feel thee, it is work well done, and fitting for a princess, descended of so many royal kings. She shall be buried by her Antony. <clears throat> no grave upon the earth shall clip in it appear so famous. High events as these strike those that make them. And their story is no less in pity than his glory which brought them to be lamented. Our army shall, in solemn show, attend this funeral. Valiant gentlemen, let us survey the vantage of the field. dark fills the wide vessel of the universe. From camp to camp, through the foul womb of night, the hum of either army stilly sounds, that the thick sentinels almost receive the secret whispers of each other's watch. Fire answers fire, and through their paley flames each battle sees the other's umbered face. Steed threatens steed in high and boastful nays piercing the night's dull air. And from the tents, the armourers accomplishing the knights with busy hammers closing rivets up give dreadful note of preparation. The country cocks do crow, the clocks do toll in the third hour of drowsy morning name. What is the clock? It's supper time, my lord. It's nine o'clock. I will not sup tonight. Good Norfolk, hie thee to thy charge and give careful watch. Choose trusty sentinels. Hmm? Send out a perceivant at arms to Stanley's regiment. Bid him bring his power before sunrise. Now saddle white Surrey for the field tomorrow. See that my staves be sound and not too heavy. Bid my guard watch. Leave me. O oh, Ratcliffe, about the mid of night, come to my tent and help to arm me. Leave me, I say. Oh, 
And now prosperity begins to melt and drop into the rotten mouth of death. Here in these confines slyly have I lurked to watch the waning of mine adversaries. But see you now, take heed of yonder dog. Look, when he fawns, he bites, and when he bites, his venom tooth will rankle to the very death. Have not to do with him. Beware of him. Sin, death, and hell have set their marks on him, and all their ministers attend on him. From forth the kennel of a womb hath crept a hellhound that doth hunt us all to death. That dog that had his teeth before his eyes to worry lambs and lap their gentle blood, that foul defacer of God's handiwork, that most excellent grand tyrant of the earth, that reigns in galled eyes of weeping souls, a womb let loose to chase us to our graves. But bear with me, for I am hungry for revenge, and now I cloy me with beholding it. I had an Edward before a Richard killed him. I had a Harry before a Richard killed him. If heaven have any grievous plague in store, exceeding those that I can wish upon thee, oh, let them keep it till thy sins be ripe, and then hurl down their indignation on thee, the troubler of the poor world's peace, the worm of conscience, Still benore thy soul, thy friends. Suspect for traitors even while thou livest, and take thou deep traitors for thy dearest friends. <laughs> no sleep close up that deadly eye of thine, unless it be whilst some tormenting dream affrights thee with a hell of ugly devils. Thou elvish marked a board of rooting hog! Thou that was sealed in thy nativity, a slave of nature, and a son of hell! Thou slander of thy mother's heavy womb, thou loathed issue of thy father's loins! Richard yet lives! Hell's black intelligence only reserved their favour to buy souls and send them thither. But at hand, at hand ensues his piteous and unpitied end. Earth gapes, hell burns, fiends roar, and saints pray to have him suddenly conveyed away. Cancel his bond of life, dear God, I pray that I may live to say the dog is dead. What? And dost thou scorn me for my gentle counsel, and seek to soothe the very devil that I warn thee from? Remember this, another day, when he shall split thy very heart with sorrow, and say poor Margaret was a prophetess. Live each of you the subjects to his hate, and he to yours, and all of you to God's. When I was mortal, my anointed body by thee was punched full of deadly oaths. Think on the tower and me, despair and die. Harry the Sixth bids thee despair and die. Richard, thy wife, that Richard and thy wife, that never slept an hour with thee. Now fills thy sleep with retributions. Tomorrow in the battle, think of me. And fall thy edgeless sword, despair, and die. Let me sit heavy on thy soul tomorrow. Think 
how thou stepp'st me in my prime of youth at Tewkesbury. Despair, therefore, and die. Bloody and guilty, guiltily awake, and in a bloody battle end thy days. Think on, Lord Hastings, despair and die. Let me sit heavy on thy soul tomorrow. Rivers that died at Pomfret, despair and die. The last was I that helped thee to the crown. The last was I that felt thy tyranny. Oh, in the battle, think on Buckingham and die in terror of thy guiltiness. Dream on, dream on of bloody deeds and death. Fainting, despair, despairing, yield thy breath. Awake, and think our wrongs in Richard's bosom will conquer him. Awake, and win the day. Bind up my wounds. Have mercy, Jesus! Oh, I did that dream. Oh, oh, coward conscience, how dost thou afflict me? The lights burn blue. It is now dead midnight. Cold, fearful drops stand upon my trembling flesh. What do I fear? Myself? There's none else by. The Richard loves Richard, that is, I am I. Is there a murderer here? No, no, no. Yes, I am. Then fly. What? From myself? Great reason why, lest I revenge. I love myself! Wherefore? For any good that I myself have done unto myself, oh. Oh no, alack, I rather hate myself for hateful deeds committed by myself. I am a villain, yet I lie, I am not fool, of thyself speak well, fool, do not flatter, my conscience has a several thousand tongues and every tongue brings in it several tale and every tale condemns me for a villain, perjury. Perjury in the highest degree. Murder. Stern murder in the direst degree. All several sins, all used in each degree, thrown to the bar, crying all. Guilty. Guilty. Oh, I shall despair. There is no creature loves me, and if I die, no soul will pity me. Nay, wherefore should they, since that I myself find in myself no pity to myself? Methought the souls of all that I had murdered came to my tent and... Everyone did threat tomorrow's vengeance on the head of Richard. Oh, Radcliffe, Radcliffe, I have had the most fearful dream. What thinkest thou? Will all our friends prove true? No doubt, my lord. 
Oh, Ratcliffe, I fear. I fear. Nay, good, my lord. Be not afraid of shadows. By the Apostle Paul. Shadows tonight have struck more terror into the soul of Richard than can ten thousand soldiers armed in proof and led by shallow Richmond. You must, my lord, seek rest before the dawn. <gasps> it's sleep. Sleep I cannot. How many thousand of my poorest subjects are at this hour asleep? Oh, sleep. Oh, gentle sleep, nature's soft nurse. How have I frighted thee that thou wilt no more lay down mine eyes and steep my senses in forgetfulness? It is not near day. Come, go with me. In my tent I shall become the eavesdropper to see if any mean to shrink from me. Uneasy lies the head that wears a crown. Damsel of France, I think I have you fast. Unchain your spirits now with spelling charms. A goodly prize, fit for the devil's grace. Oh. See how the ugly wench doth bend her brows, and as with Cersei she would change my shape. Change to a worse shape thou canst not be. O oh, Charles, the Dauphin is a proper man. No shape but his will please your dainty eyes. A plaguing mischief lies on Charles and thee, and may ye both be suddenly surprised by bloody hands in sleeping on your bed. Thou banning hag! Enchantress, hold thy tongue. I prithee, give me leave to curse a while. Curse, Miss Crean, when thou comest to the stake. of kings, this sceptred isle, this earth of majesty, this seat of Mars, this other Eden, demi-paradise, this fortress built by nature for herself against infection and the hand of war, this happy breed of men, this little world, this precious stone set in silver sea, which serves it in the office of a wall or as a moat defensive to a house against the jealousies of less happier lands. This blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this England. Go, seek the traitor Gloucester. Hang him instantly. Black up his eyes. Leave him to my displeasure. Go, seek the traitor Gloucester, pinion him like a thief and bring him before us. Though well we may pass upon his life without form of justice, yet our power shall do a courtesy to our wrath, which men may blame but not control. Who goes there, the traitor? Oh, ingrateful fox is he. Find fast his corky arms. <laughs> what mean your graces? Find him, I say! Consider, you are my guests. Find him, I say! Hard, hard, a filthy oh. traitor! <laughs> Unmerciful lady that you are, I'm none! <laughs> to this chair, find him! Just <laughs> uh. 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 most ignobly done to pluck me by the hair. <laughs> so white and such a traitor. Naughty lady, those hairs that thou dost ravish from my head will quicken and accuse thee. I am your host. Ah. With robber's hands, you should not my hospitable flavours ruffle thus. Well, what will you do? Come, sir, 
What letters have you late of France? Be simple answer, for we know the truth. And what confederacy have you with the traitors, late footed in the oh. kingdom? Where have you sent the lunatic king? Speak! I, I have a letter, guessingly set down, that, that comes from one that's of a neutral heart, uh, and not from one opposed. Cunning. And false. Where hast thou sent the king? To Dover. Wherefore to Dover? Wast thou not charged at peril? Wherefore to Dover? Let him first answer that. I am tied to the stake, and I must stand the course. Wherefore to oh. Dover? <laughs> because I would not see thy cruel nails pluck out his poor old eyes, <laughs> nor thy fierce sister in his anointed flesh Sick, stick boorish fangs. But I shall see the winged vengeance overtake such children. Oh. Thou shalt see it never. <laughs> Fellows, hold the chair. Upon these eyes of thine, I'll set my foot. If he that would lift to see me old, give me some help. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> oh. My lord, I have served you ever since I was a child. The better service have I never done you than now to bid you hold. How oh, now, you dog! If you did wear a beard upon your chin, I'd shake it on this quarrel. My villain! Take the chance of anger! My lord, I am slain. You have what I left to see some mischief on him. See it shouted in the mass. No. Help! Fire! Jelly! <laughs> of nature to quit this horrid act. Oh. <laughs> Thou dost call on him that hates thee. It was he that made the overture of thy treason to us. Oh. <laughs> it was too good to pity thee. Oh, my follies. Uh, then, then, then Edgar is abused. Oh, kind gods, <laughs> forgive me that and prosper him. <laughs> God bless him at the gate. And let him smell his way to Dover! Uh, my lord, how look you? I have received a hurt, my lady. Turn out that eyeless villain! Throw the slave upon the dunghill! Regan, I bleed apace. Come, Goneril, give me your arm. I'll never care what wickedness I do if that man come to good. If she live long and in the end meet the old course of death, women will all turn monsters. Go thou and get some flax and whites of eggs to bind his bleeding face. Now heaven help him. Graceless! Wilt thou deny thy parentage? This argues what her kind of life hath been. Wicked and vile, and so her death concludes. Cry, Joan, mystical. God knows thou art a collop of my flesh. And for thy sake have I shed many a tear. Deny me not, I prithee, gentle Joan. Peasant, abort! You have suborned this man, a purpose to obscure my noble birth. <laughs> Tis true, I gave a noble to the priest the morn that I was wedded to her mother. Kneel down and take my blessing, good my girl. Wilt thou not soup? I 
curse upon thy nativity! I wish the milk thy mother gavest thou when thou suckest at her breast had been a little rat's bane for thy sake, or else when thou didst tend my lambs in the field, some ravenous wolf had eaten thee. Dost thou deny thy father, cursed rub? Burn her! Burn her! Hanging is too good! Oh, take her away, for she hath built too long to fill this world with vicious qualities. First, let me tell you whom you have condemned. Not me begotten of a shepherd swain, but issued from the progeny of kings, virtuous and holy, chosen from above, by inspiration of celestial grace to work exceeding miracles on earth. I never had to do with wicked spirits, but you, that are polluted with your lust, stained with the guiltless breath of innocence. Because you want the grace that others have, you judge it straight a thing impossible to compass wonders but by help of devils. No, misconceived. John of Arc has been a virgin from tender infancy, chaste and immaculate in very thought, whose maiden blood, thus rigorously effused, will cry for vengeance at the gates of heaven. I away with her to execution. And hark ye, sirs, because she is a maid, spare for no faggots, let there be enough. Place barrels of pitch upon that fatal state that, that so her torture may be shortened. Will nothing turn your unrelenting hearts? Then, Joan, discover thine infirmities that is warranted by law to be thy privilege. I am with child, ye bloody homicides. Murder not yet the fruit within my womb, although ye hail me to a violent death. Now heaven forfend the holy maid with child. <laughs> the greatest miracle that e'er ye wrought. Is all your strict preciseness come to this? Why, she and the dolphin have been juggling. I did imagine what would be her refuge. Well, go to. We'll have no bastards live, especially since Charles must father it. You are the thief. My child is none of his. It was Alanson that enjoyed my love. Alanson? A notorious Machiavel? <laughs> it dies, and if he'd had a thousand lives. Oh. Give me leave. I have to do the truth. Put me the child. No, yes, it's your cannons. But Hernia, King of Naples, that prevailed. <laughs> a married man. That's most intolerable. Now, here's a girl I think knows not well. There were so many, who she can accuse? It's sign she hath been liberal and free. <gasps> and yet, forsooth, she's a virgin pure. Strumpet, thy words condemn thy brat and thee. Use no entreaty, for it is in vain. Then leave me hence, with whom I leave my curse. May never the glorious sun reflect his beams upon the country which you make abode, but darkness and the gloomy shade of death environ you, till mischief and despair drive you to break your necks or hang yourselves! Break thou in pieces and consume to ashes, thou Foul, accursed minister of hell! Ah! Over park, over pale, that a flood, that a fire, 
I do wander everywhere, <laughs> swifter than the moon sphere. And I serve the fairy queen to do her orbs upon the green. <laughs> <laughs> the king doth keep his revels here tonight. Take heed, the queen, come not within his sight. Mm. Oberon is passing fell and wrong. For she is her attendant half. A lovely boy, stolen from an Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling. Jealous Oberon would have the child. Might of his train to trace the forest wild. But she prefers with oh. holds the loved boy. Crowns him with flowers and makes him oh a joy. <laughs> and now they never meet in grove or green, like fountain clear or spangled starlight sheep. But they do square, and all their elves for fear <laughs> creep into acorn cups <laughs> and hide them there. Either I mistake your shape or making quite. Or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite called Robin Goodfellow, and not ye he. Thou speakest aright. <laughs> I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest who I run, and I make him smile. Oh. When I, a fat and bean fed horse, beguiled, laying <laughs> in like the swiftly bow. And sometimes, look I, in a gossip spot, in fairy likeness of a roasted crab. And when she drinks, against her lips I buff, and on her with it do I pour the ale. <laughs> <laughs> the wisest arms, telling the saddest tale. Sometimes a three-foot stool mistaketh me. Then, slip I from her bound. Down tumbles she, a tail of grass, and falls into a cup. And the whole choir hold their hips and laugh and wax it in their mouth and knees and swear. A merrier hour was never wasted there. The room fairy, here comes Oberon. And here my mistress, would that he were gone. Ooh. Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What? Jealous Oberon? Very skip heads. I have forsworn his bed and company. Oh, tarry, rash wanton, am not I thy lord? Uh, then I must be thy lady. But I know when thou hast stolen away from fairyland and in the shape of Corin sat all day playing on pipes of corn and versing love to amorous Philida. Why art thou here? Come from the farthest step of India. Put that forsooth the bouncing Amazon, your busking mistress and your warrior love. To Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus for shame, Titania? Glance at my credit with Apollyta, knowing that I know thy love to Theseus. Did thou not lead him through the glimmering night from Perigenia, whom he ravished? and make him, with fair eagle, break his faith with Ariadne and Antiopa. These are the forgeries of jealousy. And never since the middle summer's spring met we on hill, in dale, forest, or mead, by paved fountain, or by rushy brook, or oh. in the beached margins of the sea, to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind. But with thy brawls, thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds, piping to us in vain, as in revenge, have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which falling in the land hath every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continents. The ox hath therefore stretched his yoke in vain, the ploughman lost his sweat, and the green corn hath rotted ere his youth attained a beard. The fold stands empty in the drowned field, and crows are fatted with the murrian flock. The nine men's morris is filled up with mud, and the quaint mazes in the wanton green, for lack of tread, are undistinguishable. Sure. The human mortals want their winter here. No night is now with him or Carol blessed. Therefore the moon, 
the governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air that traumatic diseases do abound. And thorough this distemperature, we see the seasons alter. Hoary-headed frosts fall in the fresh lap of the crimson rose. And on old Hyam's thin and icy crown, an odorous chaplet of sweet summer buds is as in mockery set. The spring, the summer, the childing autumn, angry winter change their wanted liveries, and the mazed world by their increase now knows not which is which. And this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her over on? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. <laughs> Set your heart at rest. The fairy land bides not the child of me. His mother was a votress of my order. And in the spiced Indian air by night, full often hath she gossiped by my side and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traders on the flood. When we have laughed to see the sails conceive and grow big-bellied with the wanton wind, which she, with pretty and with swimming gait following, her womb then rich with my young squire, would imitate, and sail upon the land to fetch me trifles and return again, as from a voyage, rich with merchandise. But she, being mortal, of that boy did die, and for her sake do I rear up her boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me, and I will spare your haunts. Give me the boy. And I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away. We shall chide downright if I longer stay. I'll go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. Good morrow to you. Here. Yeah. The street is narrow. The throng that follows Caesar at the heels of senators, prietors, common suitors who proud of feeble man almost to death. Here shall I stand till Caesar pass by. And as a suitor, I shall give him this. <coughs> 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 Beware of Brutus. Take heed of Cassius. Come not near Casca. Have an eye to sinner. Trust not Trebonius. Mark well Metellus Simba. Decius Brutus loves thee not. Thou hast wronged Caius Megarius. There is but one mind in all these men, and it is bent against Caesar. If thou beest not a mortal, nor do you, security gives way to conspiracy. The mighty God defend thee. <coughs> if thou readst this, O Caesar, thou mayest live. If not, the fates with traitors do contrive. <coughs> Caesar! Beware the eyes of March!
Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often teared with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus hath told you Caesar was ambitious. If this were so, it was a grievous fault. And grievously hath Caesar answered it. Here, under leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honourable man, so are they all, all honourable men. Come I to speak at Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. But Brutus says he was ambitious. And Brutus is an honourable man. He hath brought many captives home to Rome. Whose ransoms did the general coffers fill? Did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When that the poor hath cried, Caesar hath wept. Ambition should be made of sterner stuff, yet Brutus says he was ambitious. And Brutus is an honourable man. You all did see that on the loop record, I thrice presented him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet Brutus says he was ambitious and sure he is an honorable man. I speak not to disprove what Brutus spoke, but I am here to speak what I do know. You all did love him once. Not without cause. What cause withholds you then to mourn for him? O oh, judgment, thou art fled to brutish beasts, and men have lost their reason. Bear with me. My heart is in the coffin there with Caesar. And I must pause till it come back to me. You all do know this mantle. I remember the first time ever Caesar put it on. It was on a summer's evening in his tent. That day he overcame the nervy eye. Look. In this place ran Cassius' dagger through. See what a rent the envious Casca made. Through this, the well-beloved Brutus stabbed. And as he plucked his cursed steel away, Mark how the blood of Caesar followed it, as rushing out of doors to be resolved if Brutus so unkindly knocked or no. Oh. For Brutus, as you know, was Caesar's angel. Judge, O oh you gods, how dearly Caesar loved him. This was the most unkindest cut of all. For when the noble Caesar saw him stab, in gratitude, more strong than traitor's arms, quite vanquished him and burst his mighty heart, and in his mantle, muffling up his face, even at the base of Pompey's statue, which all the while ran blood, great Caesar fell. Oh, what a fall was there, my countrymen. 
and I and you and all of us fell down while bloody treason flourished over us. Oh, now you weep. And I perceive you feel the dint of pity. These are gracious drops. Kind souls, what weep you when you but behold our Caesar's vestige are wounded? Look you here. Here is himself, marred as you see. With traitors. Fellows in arms, and my most loving friends, bruised underneath the yoke of tyranny, thus far into the bowels of the land have we marched on without impediment. The weary sun that left a golden set, and by the bright track of his fiery car, gives signal of a goodly day tomorrow. More than I have said, loving countrymen, the leisure and enforcement that time forbids to dwell upon. Yet remember this, God and our good cause fight on our side. The prayers of holy saints and strong souls, like high red bulwarks, stand before our faces. Civil wounds are stopped. Peace lives again, that she may long live here. God say Amen. Thank you.